Viola, what's the difference between a wax, a dab, and an oil? Waxes, dabs, and oils. Oh, my. Find out today on Medical History Mystery. Welcome to Medical History Mysteries. I'm Dr. Pam Maragliano Muniz, and with me, as always, Mr. Pharmacology, Dr. Tom Viola. Tom, last week we talked about street drugs and how um, there's so many things that can be mixed into them, and it could be potentially very dangerous for our patients to not only take, but then to mix with the medications that we administer as dental professionals. So we promised that we would dig a little bit deeper. And I know you've mentioned some things that are like Greek to me, a wax, a dab, and an oil. What the heck is that? Well, uh, if you're talking about cannabis, remember that uh, if you're my age uh, or thereabouts, you remember that, uh, forgive the expression, but when you bought a $10 bag of cannabis, uh, colloquially called a dime bag way back when, uh, what'd you get in that bag? All it was stems and seeds and leaf, right? That was the stuff you bought as marijuana back then. It was leafy material. So we all thought that the good stuff in the cannabis plant was in the leaf, right? Because that's what we bought. But as it turned out, uh, the leafy material really uh, wasn't it. As a matter of fact, the, the leaves of the cannabis plant really don't contain most of the actives. The most, most of the actives are contained in the flower of the cannabis plant. Now, of course, uh, we've figured that out over the course of time and flowers became the thing. And when the flowers are dried, they become uh, buds, right? And so for a long time, we trained, traded in cannabis buds, but then we realized that actually the good stuff in the cannabis plant is contained in these little hair-like projections on the leaves and the flowers called trichomes, little sacks of goo is what I like to call them. And we realized that if we can use an organic solvent to soak the good stuff out of the plant or out of those trichomes, then guess what? We need the plant anymore. And so we've developed these extracts of the cannabis plant. So when you use a, to put it in very basic terms, if you use a solvent to soak out the good stuff from the plant, what's left, right, is the solvent mixed with cannabis extract, right? Well, that's essentially an oil, okay? Now, if you try to remove the solvent, which most people would recommend considering the solvents could be things like, oh, I don't know, butane, uh, vitamin E acetate, MCT oil, not some nice stuff to put in your lungs. Okay, so when you try to extract the solvent, you get more and more concentrated forms of this extract. And if it becomes a uh, sort of like a semi-solid, uh, that's like a thick oil, that's cannabis oil, right? If you evaporate off even more of the solvent, it becomes even more solid and that's sort of like a wax called wax. And it can, you can extract almost all of the solvent and get it to somewhere it's kind of brittle. Uh, and so that's sometimes called, um, you know, street word would be like shatter, okay? And we literally shatter it into pieces. All of these are, are extracts of the cannabis plant. So all of them contain the good stuff from the cannabis plant without the plant. Why I mention all this is because it's difficult for people who aren't knowledgeable about these dosage forms to even know what they are. So if you found a dollop of something in a plastic bag in your kid's bedroom that looked like earwax, would you know that's cannabis? It doesn't look green, doesn't smell like cannabis, kind of smells like lighter fluid. That's cannabis. And so between the waxes, right, and the oils, and what's a dab? Well, a dab is sort of like what we just discussed. It's a, either a semi-solid or somewhat semi-solid, but the way you take it makes it the dab. So think like the old oil lamps, right, with the glass globe, right, and the little flame at the bottom, but replace the flame with something like a 400 degree Fahrenheit heating element. Drop the oil or the sem don't do this at home, by the way, folks. Drop the oil or the semi-solid onto the heating element inside this glass globe, and what happens? Poof! What do you do? Dabbing. So 
ultimately you're getting the drug in your lungs, dabbing, vaping, right? But you can use oils orally. You can make oils into edibles and use those. The point of all this discussion, Pam, is to point out to everybody that marijuana is not just green leafy material that you roll up and smoke anymore. And these concentrated extracts are indeed just that concentrated. So to give you some perspective, in our day, the leafy material that was available that we called marijuana probably had a THC concentration of anywhere between two and 8%. Dabs and extracts, even hashish that's available currently today can have THC concentrations exceeding 50%. So it's a lot of THC, which means you have a lot more side effects and a lot of negative aspects like paranoia, ironically, and, and even anxiety from high levels of THC. So not only that, that it's not really regulated. Um, I could grow some out in my backyard and there's, I don't even know how much would be in a brownie or whatever I'd be making from home versus my friend down the street versus what you'd buy in the dispensary. How do you know how much you're actually, when I say ingesting, whether it's, you know, inhaling, ingesting, how much are you taking in? You really don't know because it's a plant, first of all. So plants by their nature can, can vary in total THC concentration, which is why the industry desperately seeks to standardize it through the use of clones, right? Trying to get a specific amount of THC per plant. Uh, but remember there's synthetics as well, right? Uh, and, and, and also um, taking the extract means based on how you prepared it, the THC concentration can vary greatly from you know, one person's batch, as you just said, versus another's, or that person same, making it the same way every time because it's a plant, because of the ex nature of extraction, you may not get the same amount each time. So nobody really knows how much they're taking. And that's, again, as we alluded to in our previous episode, that's the risk, but also the allure to some folks. Like, hey, I don't know what I'm gonna get this time. Let's see if this batch of cannabis is extract is stronger than the last batch I made or my neighbor made or what I bought from my friend. Does the delivery system make a difference when it comes to the dental implications of cannabis? Uh, yes and no. How about that as an answer? Okay, so uh, and no matter how you got the cannabis in you, you can expect things like uh, increased heart rate, uh, increased blood pressure, immunosuppression, um, and, and resistance to anesthetic effects, uh, anesthetic agents, and their effects to some to some uh, 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 to some extent, anyway. But the negative aspects, like uh, we don't, the nature of the excipients we talked about, those solvents like butane and MCT oil. Can have negative effects on health and if i specifically like one type versus another i may have more issues overall like liver and kidney issues and definitely obstructive lung disease so all that matters to us in dentistry because if you're a heavy vapor uh you like vaping more than you like smoking let's say marijuana and plant material well you're going to have more potential lung damage okay from not just the vape itself but what's in the vape the hardest part of extracts for people to really come to grip, grips with is whatever was in that plant, whatever that little plant was exposed to in its lifetime, potential carcinogens in the soil, heavy metals in the soil, PCBs in the soil, fertilizers and, and fungicides, whatever that plant was exposed to, when that plant material is now taken and harvested and extracted, those things become part of the extract. What you're vaping is really all of the good stuff, but also, also all of the bad stuff that was in that plant extract. So you may have more lung damage. Okay, I'm not going to vape. I'll smoke plant material. Okay, but if you, let's say you use a bomb, which a lot of people use to get to heighten the effect of cannabis. Well, bong users tend to hold the smoke in their lungs longer. Why? Because the bong through this water apparatus cools the smoke down so you can breathe it in and hold it in longer. Well, I'm going to end up having more tar in my lungs because I hold the smoke in my lungs longer. And so I may have a greater risk of obstructive lung disease and maybe even COPD long-term. That's the other thing about cannabis. We just don't know. 
Its widespread use is relatively recent. We don't have any long-term data to suggest what the health effects are going to be. So I don't and really think dental effects, right? I mean, there's that study that came out that there increases the risk for periodontal disease. Um, but there's also studies that say that it increases the risk for oral cancer and caries, but there's not a lot of long-term data out there. Yep, periodontal disease and, and the risk of xerostomia is great. It makes you, you know, crave cariogenic snacks and foods. And then let's not forget, as you said, immunosuppression can increase the risk if you're already infected with HPV, for example, increases the risk of head and neck cancer as well. So there, there's a, a lot to be considered with the use of cannabis. So it's not just, it's, that's why it's a yes and no answer. It's, it's yes, it can, it can affect your health systemically based on how you took it in, but ultimately there's the effects that are common no matter how you got it in. Wow. All right. So as dental professionals, we still have to review their medical histories, ask the questions, find out if they're under the influence right then and there during that appointment. And then you have to make your decisions accordingly. And then also be wary that um, depending on where they're getting their cannabis from, it could be extremely dangerous for them. And so mixing that with local anesthetics, analgesics or antibiotics, probably not antibiotics, but I would imagine anything else could be extraordinarily dangerous there. So definitely a lot to keep in mind. So this is cannabis, but we still need to cover CBD. So that gives me something to look forward to next week. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Just tell your tell everybody out there one word of advice before we part ways today, which is why don't rely on this. Just because you can't smell cannabis doesn't mean that they're not using cannabis. And half of us can't smell from COVID anyway. So definitely use your eyes, use your brain, and use what's exactly. of your nose. All right. So this is Medical History Mysteries, and we will see you next week. Bye. Thanks, everybody.